hour being after 5 o'clock, it's my high honor and privilege to call the S September 12th, 2024 school committee meeting to order. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance, and our flag is to our right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, welcome to this first uh, full formal meeting of the town board at our new middle school. We have an action-packed agenda this evening. We're very excited. And we begin our uh, meeting, as we always do, with student recognitions. And this, uh, quite fitting, uh, we will begin this beginning of the school year with Walpole Middle School volunteer leaders. The Walpole Middle School grade 8 volunteer leaders are present to be recognized for their hard work, leadership, and their ability to work with the middle school student tours. These students gave up one of their last summer days to volunteer and help acclimate the incoming classes to the new school. They greeted the students as they did us this evening uh, and provided tours of the school. Not all the volunteers are able to attend. The full list of the volunteers is below. Their volunteerism is greatly appreciated and, the help, uh, and they helped immensely to transition to our new middle school. I think we'll perhaps call upon the middle school principal to say something else sure. as well. Um, so this year was um, a very unique, exciting year as uh, we opened up this brand new, gorgeous, state-of-the-art building. And we had three days of tours for 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. And not only did our 8th grade leaders um, come in for one of those days, they also came in the Monday before to get acclimated with the building themselves so that they could lead on this. And we are incredibly grateful. Uh, for their support, and a few of them are actually going to join me tonight because it's very fitting for them to share some of the opening remarks. Excellent. So we'll hear more from them in a little bit. Excellent. So thank you. Thank you very much. So they're coming back up after? Um, some of them are. Not all right, all excellent. Them, so I don't know if anybody wants to. Um, can I make a call? Oh, after, go for it. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you all. Um, you know, I was here for those days when you were uh, working, giving tours, doing some icebreakers, and um, really we couldn't have done this without you. So I really appreciate, appreciate your dedication and hard work. And I actually saw when you came to do some training as well, just even learning everybody's names um, and, and working with the assistant principal. So nice job. Questions or comments on the committee? Ms. Rogers. Um. I'm facing you. I'm bringing this close, but I'm facing you. So my daughter was one of the seventh graders that you helped. So I just personally wanted to thank you for helping all the students that were very lost, even though you guys didn't even really know the school yet. So I appreciate you doing that um, and dedicating your time. Other questions or comments from the committee? Uh, seeing none, uh, if you guys would like to come up, we'd love to get a picture of you all um, and send it to our vast email audience as well. <laughs> so, Pratt, what do you think? Yeah, right here. Uh, principal, yeah, right here. Just um, watch the cords, Karen. You guys are going to need to make like maybe three rows, sort of maybe standing no to sitting. <laughs> Picture, excellent. Thank you very much. For those who are not staying for the other portion of the report, we know you have a lot to do and you don't have to listen to us go through policy later in the evening. So we're very grateful for that. Our next order of business is our Walpole High School student uh, report. Representative James Patey will give a report from the high school. James. Good evening, everyone. 
I think we're just we're talking just loud, James. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is James Beatty, and I'm a junior at Walpole High School. The school year has officially begun, and we are into the first full week of school. Walpole High, Walpole High School welcomes the class of 2028, containing 230 new students. Students in ninth grade attended an assembly yesterday to introduce them to the critical incident response, more commonly known referred to as the ALICE program. The Walpole Police Department has worked with Walpole Public Schools for several years to prepare students and staff for the possibility of a dangerous situation. Training and drills will be, take place throughout the school year for all students. Walpole Public Schools offers optional Chromebook insurance for grades 6 through 12. $30 fee will cover any accidental damage to Chromebooks through September of 2025. All high school students will com complete a short confidential survey on Wednesday, October 2nd during interventions. The survey is from Massachusetts General Hospital regarding mental health and substance abuse. During interventions on Wednesdays, colleges are visiting Walpole High School offering knowledge and handouts in the gym. Some, some of the colleges have already visited include UMass Amherst, Merrimack, Tufts, and the University of Alabama. Walpole Public Schools Music Department is offering private lessons for students in grade four, fourth grade through 12th. Lessons are taught by accomplished performers for many instruments such as including guitar, piano, trombone, and many more. Registration closes Monday, September 16th. Clubs are back up and running. Popular clubs many students are joining include speech and debate, Art Club, Bible Club, Photography Club, and newly started Dungeons and Dragons Club. Fall sports have been back in action for a few weeks and students are looking forward to an exciting fall season. The field hockey team is off to a great start and are currently undefeated at 4-0. The football team plays Foxborough in Foxborough tomorrow night at 7. The volleyball team as well as the boys and girls soccer teams are playing today against Needham. Cross countries Next meet is Wednesday, September 18th at home against Branchy. Student athletes are working hard and doing great. Class of 2025 yearbook planning is underway. Senior portraits, portraits must be submitted by October 4th. There is a Google Classroom that students and parents and guardians can join, which will provide all announcements about important days throughout the school year. There is also an Instagram page. PAC will hold their first meeting of the year on Wednesday, October 23rd. Principal Inbush will provide an overview of the Walpole High School Auditorium renovation project. And that's everything, thank you. Thank you very much, James. Questions or comments for James? Seeing none, uh, we appreciate it. Please feel free to hang out for the rest of the uh, meeting or go on to the other activities you have. But okay. really you. appreciate you coming up this evening. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we now move on to uh, our traditional first school committee meeting after the opening of school opening school of school reports, where we will hear from all the building principals. Perhaps we will hear from Ms. Ruggiero first, seeing as uh, we're all very excited for this newest uh, building. So come on down. Thank you. If you're an eighth grade leader who's going to join me, come on up now, okay? everyone. I'm Carrie Ruggiero, proud principal of Walpole Middle School. So I'm happy to be here along with some of our eighth grade leaders to provide an update regarding the opening of our brand new school. This year, uh, Walpole Middle School welcomed 842 students, 136 dedicated staff members to the new state-of-the-art facility. Among our staff, staff, nine are brand new to our school, bringing fresh energy and expertise to our community. The excitement among both students and staff have been palpable from the moment they walk through the doors. Our students have embraced the new learning spaces with enthusiasm, and it's been great to see how quickly they've adapted to their new surroundings. Staff have been equally energized, diving into teaching and learning with a renewed passion in a facility designed to enhance collaboration, innovation, and student engagement. 
The flexible spaces, modern technology, and thoughtful layout are already making a positive impact on the educational experience. So now I would like to introduce Roma on our, our next section of our opening. Come on up, Roma. Hello, my name is Roma. As one of the eighth grade leaders, I had the opportunity to help welcome students to our new school by giving tours with other eighth grade leaders, administration, and staff. We held three days of tours for students by grade level teams. It was a great experience showing everyone around with the building, helping them find their way, and answering any questions they may have had. We want to make sure all students felt comfortable and ready for the new school year. This also gave parents an opportunity to uh, practice the temporary drop off and pick up procedures. I think the tours really helped everyone get used to new spaces and made the transition smoother for everyone. And now I'd like to introduce Ainsley. Hello, my name is Ainsley. I'd like to share how smoothly the first weeks of school had gone. Before we arrived, our teachers and staff started the year with professional development and training focused on the new facility, especially all the new technology. They also had time to plan and collaborate with each other to ensure everything was ready for us when we arrived. We were welcomed with engaging activities that helped us get familiar with the building and connect with our classmates and teachers. The staff made sure to create a safe and welcoming environment, setting high expectations for behavior, attitude, and effort right from the start. It's clear they've worked hard to help us have a great start to the school year. Next, I would like to introduce you all to Rithvik. Hi, my name is Rithvik, and I wanted to share an update about the ongoing work at our new school. Vertex, Fontaine, and Tappa have been great partners, and they continue to stay on site, making sure everything is completed and addressed as needed. The next phase of construction is focused on completing the parking lot, and we're excited to see that it's scheduled to be finished by October 25th. Right now, we have 17 buses for arrival and dismissal, and we've had temporary drop-off and pickup procedures in place during this phase of construction. We wanted to thank all the families for their patience as we work through this final part of the project. We're looking forward to everything being fully completed soon. I would now like to invite Carrie to the podium. Hello, my name is Carrie Ann McPherson. I'd like to take a moment and recognize and thank our custodians for their hard work in getting our new school ready. Over the summer, they worked really hard to close out Johnson and Bird schools and then spent time familiarizing themselves with our new building and getting trained on the building management systems. Thanks to their dedication and effort, everything was set and ready for us to open. We truly appreci appreciate everything. Now I'm gonna invite Gabby to the stand. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gabby Bossy, and I'm an eighth grade leader here at WMS. We are really excited for our families to have the chance to not only tour our amazing new state-of-the-art facility, but also to meet our incredible staff and hear about all the exciting things happening in our new curriculum. We're eager to share how this cutting-edge environment is enhancing student learning and engagement every day. It's been such a great start to the school year, and we can't wait to show everyone how this new space is making a positive impact on our education. Due to parking constraints as we finalize this phase of, con of construction on the parking lot, we have adjusted our back-to-school night schedule to better accommodate everyone. The sixth grade back-to-school night will now take place on Monday, October 28th, and we will hold a combined seventh and eighth grade back-to-school night on Tuesday, October 29th both from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Me, as well as our other awesome eighth grade leaders, will be there to help guide parents and guardians that night. Next, I will be introducing the awesome eighth, awesome eighth grade leader, Asaya. Hello, my name is Asaya Joseph, and this year has already been a really exciting one. The new building has so much to offer, and one of the things we're really looking forward to is getting our after school activities up and running. We're all eager to take full advantage of the incredible spaces, whether it's for clubs, sports, or other programs. Over the next few weeks, it's going to be great to see all these activities come together. With the new facilities, we have more room and resources to explore our interests, try new things, and hang out with friends after school. More information will be coming out in the WMS newsletter next week. I will now re-invite Rhea to the stage. 
Hello everyone, my name is Ria Kara, and today I will be talking to you guys about the new middle school. One of the most fantastic parts of our new building is the vinyl graphics around the halls. They really help us focus on what's most important as we move through the school. As you guys know, our core values of community are compassion, responsibility, resilience, and excellence. These values are the foundation of what we believe here in our new middle school. Our teachers make sure that these core values are the center of everything we do, and it's clear how they shape our actions and attitude every day. It's inspiring to be reminded of them how, as we walk through the halls, knowing how important they are to our success. Thank you guys for your time. Now I will be asking Ms. Ruggiero to come back to the stage for some closing remarks. Well, I am beyond impressed, so I will <laughs> offer a big thank you and round of applause at the end. But I just wanted to take this time to, uh, this opportunity to ex extend our appreciation for the continued support of the school committee, as well as central administration. Your support has been instrumental in making um, the opening of Walpole Middle School such a success. I would also like to thank our caring and dedicated educators who are the true foundation of our school. Their passion, commitment, and hard work every day make a lasting impact of our students, on our students and help create a positive, engaging environment that we, we strive for. I look forward to working with our staff, students, and families to continuing the momentum of a strong start to the school year. So again, thank you for your time and thank you so much, eighth grade leaders. That was incredibly impressive. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Giro. Questions or comments from the committee? You guys want to stay up for the middle school? Well, we're not done yet. This is Gallagher. I just wanted to say, I just really loved hearing how thoughtful and appreciative your comments were. Too many people in this world comment on the things that they don't like. And you were so positive, and I think that the world is a better place for people like you. So, thank you. Ms. Geltitz. I wanted to say congratulations because it's a big deal to come up on a big stage like this and all speak so eloquently. Um, public speaking is a tough thing for many people and you guys all rocked it, so good job. Um, and I think this should be a new tradition because I think this is fantastic to hear from students at this presentation. This was awesome. Thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, th thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming to this. Your place. job. Go after that. Steve, uh, call up on the high school. I know. Let's go okay. find some kids to do with it. All right. Jan, come on down. All right. I'll follow that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Imagine if I brought our kids. <laughs> oh, that would be the best. Great. So, All right. Um, hi, everybody. Greeting, uh, good evening, school committee members, administrators, families, <clears throat> community members, students. Um, as we begin the new school year, I'm pleased to provide an update on the progress at Daniel Community Preschool. Um, we currently have 65 students to open the school year, understanding that number will grow as we grow throughout the year, um, which in the, our program brings together children with and without special needs in a collaborative and supportive environment. This integrated model provides an enriching environment for all children, promoting diversity, inclusivity, and peer modeling opportunities for social, emotional, and academic growth. Um, we have a strong team of dedicated professionals supporting our preschoolers who are committed to creating an engaging and nurturing environment that fosters early learning and development across all domains, um, including uh, our seven special education teachers, 12 um, educational support staff, our two speech language pathologists, our two occupational therapists, physical therapist, and our board certified behavior analyst. In our curriculum and learning, our integrated preschool falls a developmentally appropriate curriculum aligned with the Massachusetts play and curriculum standards, focusing, focusing on social emotional development with um, emphasis on peer interactions, emotional regulation and communication skills. We use the zones of regulation um, and social thinking to target these skills and uh, for the month of September, our focus in all the classrooms is on feelings and family and growing community. Um, we focus a lot on language development, um, expressive and receptive language through using tabletop games, cooperative play, circle time, question of the day. Um, for cognitive and academic readiness, we um, 
use introduction to basic literacy, numeracy, problem solving skills through play based learning, read alouds. Um, they're, they're playing, but they're learning, and they just they don't realize it. Uh, we focus a lot on their gross and fine motor activities, and those are incorporated to support their coordination and strength. Um, and of course, because we're an integrated program, we provide um, individualized attention um, for students who have individualized education programs to meet their specific uh, learning and developmental needs. Um, recognizing the essential role our families play in their child's education, we're fostering strong relationships with our families through regular communication. Um, and that this could be daily, incidentally, at arrival and, and drop off. Um, weekly newsletters, um, apps including Photo Circle, Class Dojo, um, just ongoing regular communication, parent teacher conferences, um, and that regular update on student progress. And we also provide opportunities for parents and caregivers to participate in classroom activities such as um, being a mystery reader. Um, recently, this past week, we hosted our annual Popsicles at preschool event to celebrate the start of the school year. And coming up, we have our first PAC meeting next week, <coughs> school governance council, and our open house and curriculum night on September 30th. So we look forward to welcoming our, our families and students then. Um, our, just our goals um, for the year is just expanding the use of play-based play -based learning activities that are adaptable to meet, to meet each child's unique needs. Um, ongoing professional development to focus on best inclusive practices to um, meet the needs of all of our learners. Um, so we're excited about the start of the school year and confident that our preschool program will continue to thrive and offer high quality early childhood um, education to all students. Um, our team is dedicated to providing a positive, safe, and inclusive environment that supports the growth and development of every child. Um, as Mrs. Ruggiero said, that, you know, thank you for your continued support, um, the support of the town, the custodians, everybody who worked so hard to get our building up and running for the start of the school year. And I look forward to updating you on our progress um, throughout the school year. Thank you very much. Questions for the director? Seeing none, thank All you. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Uh, next. Maybe elementary principals. Elementary schools, perhaps? I'm, I'm told you're presenting as a unit, so. They are. Hi, good evening, school committee members. On behalf of the elementary school principals, I wanna thank you for inviting us here tonight to share a little bit about the opening of the 2024-2025 school year, one that's filled with joy, excitement, and potential. Across the district in the four elementary schools, we welcomed 1,760 students back to school in kindergarten through grade five. Boyden has 394, Elmwood 440, Fisher with 466, and Old Coast Road School with 460 students. The summer was busy with hiring for educator and staff positions in each of our school communities. Across the elementary schools, we welcomed 33 new team members into our communities, including classroom teachers, specialists, education support paraprofessionals, and aides. We want to share our gratitude to Dr. Hahn and his team, who held an engaging orientation for new staff that left participants energized and equipped to start their school year successfully. Also, we want to thank all of the Walpole Public School educators in each of our buildings who have stepped up to be mentors to our new staff, providing connections and support during the transition one experiences when starting in a new place. We're excited to work with the new elementary school mentor liaison who will collaborate with us and all the mentors to ensure our new staff are getting their needs met throughout the year. Each school has been establishing and building relationships within the community through our partnerships with each of the PACs and events such as ice cream socials, kindergarten meetups, and an opening of the year PAC meetings. Additionally, our, cl our classrooms through the strong efforts of our educators are warm and welcoming spaces that seek to provide safe and affirming learning environments for all students where they will grow, be challenged, and achieve at high levels. We all understand the critical importance of strong home <coughs> school partnerships and look forward to continue to fostering relationships with all families in service of improving student engagement, growth, and achievement. Of particular note this summer was work at Old Post Road and Fisher Schools where solar panels were, panels were installed on the roofs of their buildings, helping the Walpole Public Schools become greener and more energy efficient and sustainable. We wanna take this opportunity to share our gratitude for our custodial staff and building maintenance department who helped prepare our buildings for students and staff to return 
and to Officer Hart, Rebel, and the Walpole Police Department and Fire Department who have been supporting us in practicing our emergency preparedness protocols and procedures. Looking ahead, we are all excited and deep into preparations for our curriculum night and open houses. The opportunities in the coming weeks will allow for families to engage with our educators to learn more about the curriculum instruction that is offered to their children. And we'll turn it over to Mr. Dearborn to talk a little bit more about curriculum. <coughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, so we're, I have the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about a curriculum initiative or implementation that we have this tonight and some professional development that will be going on as well. So beginning this school year, we are excited to be implementing the Houghton Mifflin Hardcore Interreading reading Literacy Curriculum for all grades, kindergarten through grade five. This comprehensive research-based program meets the expectations on both Ed3 Ports and Curate as it has been widely adopted by both local and national school districts. This program will be taught in conjunction with our phonics and foundational skills program foundations in our K-2 classrooms. The inter-reading curriculum was selected through a thorough curriculum review process involving educators, literacy experts, parent surveys, and district outreach. In this program, all students will gauge in high quality authentic texts in order to build knowledge and vocabulary. Students will strengthen their comprehension skills through reading, writing, and classroom discourse. The curriculum is designed to meet the diverse needs of our students, ensuring that each child can grow as a learner. Some of the things that the students will see in this curriculum are an engaging text. Students will have access to a wide variety of texts that reflect different cultures, perspectives, and genres. These texts are carefully selected to be both challenging and interesting, helping students develop critical thinking skills. They also be exposed to integrated learning. The program integrates reading, writing, speaking, and listening activities, allowing students to build literacy skills in a cohesive and meaningful way. There is also a personalized support part of it. Interreading includes resources for differentiating instruction, so teachers can meet the needs of all learners, whether they need extra support or enrichment. And of course, there's a family involvement. We recognize that families play a crucial role in, this child, in their child's literacy development. The curriculum includes resources and activities that can be used at home to support the child's learning. The staff is very excited about this new curriculum and the resources and the learning opportunities it provides for our students. We understand that the inter-reading curriculum will be implemented over multiple years and the professional development is an important part of that implementation process. Very similar to the way we implement, implemented the Bridges Math Curriculum, which is we are in our third year of, much of our professional development this year will be focused around literacy in the reading curriculum. We established an implementation team made up of one teacher per grade level per school that will, be work, that will work closely with the inter-reading coaches and our literacy coordinator. They will lead their teams in grade level implementation and also support our professional development that will take place during grade level team meetings, curriculum meetings, and early release. Though much of the professional development will focus on literacy, we understand the importance of continuing to support our educators in a variety of subject areas. So we do plan to have some professional development in the area of math, social emotional development, science, and a variety of other topics. We are excited for this curriculum to be involved in, our, in the Walpole Public Schools, as well as the many other things that we'll be teaching and working with our students throughout the school year. Thank you. Questions or comments for the elementary school? <clears throat> Was it, well, yes, this is for, I think, for you guys and for Ms. Ruggiero. So um, we obviously have new busing patterns in town um, with the combination of the two schools. And um, I think we know, I know on my own personal experience and just around the community that buses are, it's been a later um, time period to get the students home after school. I imagine a lot of that has to do with the traffic pattern not being finalized here. Um, we're battling construction, road work all around town. Washington Street's about to be closed for two weeks, which is going to be its own challenge. Um, but just curious if there are any sort of, um, if there's any work being done or is there anything we can do prior to the traffic pattern being settled or have we identified any other factors that we might need to make adjustments to um, busing in general? That's so probably a mic question, but <laughs> it feels like yeah. the time to bring it up. <laughs> so I think that you summarize the factors that are impacting busing this year. I think the large one, obviously, is the middle school, as you mentioned. You know, it's hard to anticipate restructuring of a, of a putting two schools together and restructuring their bus routes to accommodate the transportation to that building. That's um, been challenging, but I think it's been well managed at this school in particular. Unfortunately, the spillover, the delays that come from that 
restructuring are flowing down to the elementary schools and impacting those schools. So we are aware of it. We're keeping track of the data about those routes and the delays. We've, uh, as a central office, reached out to the principals and um, allowed uh, extra staffing at the schools to be compensated to monitor students who might be late getting to their buses so that the principals can work on other activities such as staff meetings and curriculum meetings and still attend those while still taking care to protect the students' uh, safety. So it is a work <coughs> in progress. It is uh, the biggest challenge we've probably ever faced in the district as far as busing goes, but we are looking at it closely and making every effort we can to improve it. We send out a communication today we're focusing on the buses that are heavily impacted, and we'll work from that going forward to make sure that the communication is there about strategies and methods we're using to help improve the situation. So it is a work in progress. We are hopeful that the completion of this school in the front where the uh, teacher parking and the buses come in off of E Street rather than coming in off of Washington and getting <coughs> stuck at the light will help to improve the situation, and we're pushing to get that done as soon as possible. Um, and are there, is it predominantly issues of just timing and delays? Are there any ridership issues um, with any of the routes? Yeah, so it, it's actually both. So it's our ridership, we've encouraged more students to ride the bus to specifically the middle schools so that we are reducing the number of cars queuing up on this site. That was successful, but that has also increased the capacity on every bus. And that's <coughs> something we haven't faced to nearly to that level. So we have very high ridership, which impacts the routes, which impacts the timing. So it's all kind of tied together, um, and that's what we're working with currently. Okay. Yes, and um, thanks, Mike. And, and we really need to wait until the construction is completed. Um, here. Here. Mm -hmm. um, to see then, with the timing, how much time that makes up. And then from there, if any changes need to be made then we will, instead of making changes you know, every okay. two weeks. It's just, that will get frustrating. So okay. we'll wait till the construction's finished, look at the timing, and then um, Mike and his team will work on it. And Rithvik tells us October 25th is the, the target date. <clears throat> okay, so I guess the message for the community is we're aware of it, and uh, be patient, <laughs> be as patient as you can. <clears throat> yes, and everyone really has been incredibly understanding. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Further questions, Ms. Rogers. I think this ties with um, transportation, new school, new curriculum, is sort of a, a plea or maybe just an encouragement for patients um, for the community because we are doing a lot of new things and people are excited about it and everyone's working hard on it. And I see it every day between administration and teachers and everyone and sort of what Nancy was saying about the positivity mm -hmm. and that there are a lot of really positive, amazing things going on. So um, I think I just wanted to say something about making sure that we're sharing all those great accomplishments that are happening too. And yes, there are growing pains and we're working through them. But um, I applaud transportation and curriculum um, and this beautiful middle school you know, for functioning as well as it has given all this newness. Mm -hmm. And I'll, can I just add? Yeah, go for it. Just uh, elementary school principals who aren't necessarily getting all the shiny new things but uh, but are kind of getting some of the the pitfalls thank you for your patience and understanding and working so hard to kind of mitigate the impact on your students and families it's appreciated mm -hmm. Mrs. Callahan. yeah I just wanted to say thank you for sharing that curriculum and instruction information I think people really are are glad to know that we're a district that is taking that the those responsibilities so seriously so I think it was important that it was part of tonight's discussion because I know so many teachers and the four of you principals and Dr. Hahn, Dr. Goff dug in really deep to do a good job and we appreciate it. Further questions or comments? I do think the curriculum piece bears underscoring just the tremendous level of work mm -hmm. the four of you as not only building leaders but curriculum leaders and uh, instructional leaders in your own buildings that the deliberative deep process that you, you undertook and the the work you committed to, um, to to implement this over the over the coming years I think is a, a tremendous undertaking and I, I think you the I as someone who's been watching this process over the past year I just I'm very happy with the way that process has, 
has rolled out and, and the work the four of you have done, and I think I'm very excited to see the fruits of that. Uh, and we'll, we'll start getting into sort of reports uh, on subject areas in the coming months and years. I'm, I'll be very excited to hear uh, what comes from that as well. But it was a tremendous effort, uh, and it, it should, should be very underscored the, the work you've all done. And I'm excited to see the fruits of that. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I just would I'd like to also recognize Shannon Finley. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, she's not here in the room tonight, and Bill obviously is, but he did a lot of work around that, worked with Shannon. But Shannon was <clears throat> tremendous in, in this whole process and, and doing a lot of research on the other side um, to help guide us in the, this process of picking this curriculum. So we couldn't have done this without Shannon and Bill working together. So Excellent. Yeah, we're, we're blessed with a number of great professionals in this district, too. Agreed. Uh, we're doing great stuff. Anything further? Last but surely not least would be the high school. <coughs> Stephen, those two get it next year. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the tag out. No, no. Oh, <laughs> we have kids next year. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, significant progress was made over the summer to prepare the high school for the new school year. Most notably, a new roof was installed on the science wing, Excellent. addressing damage from a winter storm. Additionally, air conditioning was installed in the social studies wing, which uh, much to the delight of students and staff. We, uh, we remain committed to improving HVAC systems across the entire building as part of our ongoing infrastructure upgrades. Alongside these improvements, we are also excited about the upcoming renovations and expansions planned for the high school. This year's school opening went exceptionally well. On August 26th, we hosted our annual ninth grade orientation, welcoming incoming freshmen to meet their teachers and explore our extensive range of clubs and activities. This event gives ninth graders a head start, allowing them to familiarize themselves with the school environment before the upperclassmen arrive which makes for a smoother transition. As always, we have welcomed new staff members to the high school, including teachers, ESPs, and support staff. Their enthusiasm has already made a positive impact, and we are eager to establish strong professional connections with them throughout the year. On August 27th, our staff participated in a full professional development day featuring a speaker from ASCD, the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development. This year, our focus is on differentiated instruction with plans for several more workshops throughout the year, including a full professional development day on November 5th. In terms of extracurricular activities, the high school is buzzing with opportunities. We currently offer 22 sport teams across 10 different fall sports, and there are over 40 clubs and activities for students to explore. With such a wide variety of options, there's something for everyone to get involved in, ensuring a vibrant and engaging student body. Lastly, a reminder to the community that our back to school night is scheduled for next Thursday, September 19th at 6.30. We invite all parents to join us for this event. We look forward to another outstanding school year at Walpole High. Questions or comments for Principal Inbush? We've got a lot more high school on the agenda, but uh, Mrs. Galvian. I just want to say I also appreciate your positivity, Steve. Every year you come through with it, and you know it, it was obvious with the kids that were here in the new building, but you bring it every time, so thank you. Thank you. We'll talk to you in a couple of years after the high school project. Yeah. <laughs> no, nope. um, I count on Steve. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, we have the Riveting Student Activity Fund update. From Mr. Frischer. I appreciate that introduction. This is great stuff. Hey. I, I a lot of nickels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you guys can go. Stephen, I'll see you in a couple of See you at 7. <laughs> That's the best to it. <laughs> so uh, this evening I've included within your packet is a list of the clubs, balances, and activities uh, that are hosted at each school as part of what we call student activities. Around Coming around is just a description. I gave this out about six or seven years ago, and I thought it was a good refresher on what student activities are. Maybe our viewing audience would like to hear what these accounts are and how they're different from some of our traditional accounts. So student activities are established by the school committee to ensure that young people have an opportunity to take part in 
co-curricular and extracurricular classroom experiences. Um, how are the student activities funds unique? The student activity funds are collected from students and families and are held in custody by the school department until they are utilized to pay for the activity that they were originally collected for. So they're different than appropriated dollars. They don't come from the town. The, they are provided by families to, so that their students can engage or their children can engage in activities that are hosted within the school. On the second page, um, is a listing of how these student activity accounts operate. Um, a student activity event is planned or hosted at the school. That's the, the first step. Funds are collected from students. Funds are deposited in the student activity agency account, which is a savings account, so it earns, they earn interest. A request for reimbursement form is uh, completed by the school and sent to the town finance director to pay an invoice. Funds are moved out of the savings account into the checking account. A check is issued by the student activity funds coordinator, which there is one of those at each school. And then the principal, because the principal is responsible for these student activities accounts, uh, they are the ones who sign off on the check and issue the check for payment so that the students can engage in whatever activity it is. And this includes field trips and activities such as clubs and uh, things that are hosted after school. So related to curriculum and extracurricular as well. So in your packet is a listing, um, and this is all guided under Mass General Law, by the way, which is included in your packet as well. So in the, uh, the first page of your handout is a list of each one of our schools. So you can see the elementary schools to the left, Johnson and Bird, because they did exist separately, right? So we merged the schools and then Walpole High School. So you can see the listing of all the different clubs. So if you're wondering what activities take place after school, this is a pretty good example of the plethora of things that a lot of our students are able to engage in. And I know uh, Mr. Hahn and Ms. Ruggiero have talked a lot at length about adding more clubs, especially to this amazing building, because there's so much of an opportunity to take advantage of that. So that's the existing clubs with the existing balances. And by the way, I'm gonna ask for a vote at the end of this, so please make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> so, and then on the second page um, is the Johnson and Bird repeated, the ending balances, and then the merger that took place. So we had to combine these accounts, and we used our discretion to combine them into similar accounts that are reflected on that combined Walpole Middle School uh, combined balances. And that shows you, if you took the Johnson and Bird separately, added them up, it should come up to what the Walpole Middle School combined account balance total is, okay? And then on the third page, uh, whenever we introduce a new club, obviously the principal is aware of it, the teachers come to the principal and, and request it. So here's an example of a write-up of the one additional club that we have requested for this year, which is National Art Honor Society. And it gives you a breakdown of, you know, the, the purpose of the organization, the membership, how that's made up, who is supervising these clubs, because there's always an adult who is part of these clubs running them, and that person has to be compensated, hence why we collect the funds for these uh, student activities. So, um, with that in mind, the Mass General Law requires that once you guys look at it, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. I can answer any questions you may have but it does require a vote to approve the clubs as they're listed, the balances as they stand, and then the request for an additional club. Happy to answer any questions you have about student activities. And yes, Mr. Buckley is a fascinating one. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments for uh, Assistant Superintendent Fisher on student activities? Seeing none, Chair Lynch, wait, wait. wait. you have a question? Sorry. Of course you do, of course. <laughs> what do we got? Um, you. Mike, is there any, are we under any um, obligation to ensure like parity of, um, of dollar amounts across schools or is it completely principal discretion, school by school, whatever you have in the account is what you have based on what you've taken in? Um, I, we always look at equity amongst our schools, right? And we look at the balances and we kind of keep, keep an eye on things that they're, they're equal. Do they, or they're comparable, mm -hmm. but they do not have to be equal. Each school has its own resources. Each school has its own priorities. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that within the clubs that there's certain um, activities they value more than others in right. the schools. So we just kind of keep an eye on it. We don't like the balances to get excessive. 
is actually a cap on each school's uh, balance. The principal has the discretion to move money around. They can support scholarships um, to help students, you know, go to or join these different clubs and activities. Um, so we do keep an eye out to make sure that it represents everyone as much as possible. Can I add something? I know I'm not the finance guy, but I want to, it's important to the relevance of your question. We spend a great deal of time at leadership with our principals and also in the work we do with the equity task force to ensure that there isn't a school or a club that's underfunded that maybe doesn't get the support or services. So that's something that we are very careful and conscientious of. And these balances don't necessarily represent whether or not something would run or not run. Because if we felt it was important to the growth of our students or their access to extracurricular activities, we would help support it in other ways as well. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Green. I'd like to make a motion to approve the clubs and balances as listed in the packet in the addition of the National Art Honor Society Club. Motion by Mr. Green, second by Ms. Gautis. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstained? 600. We have first reading of policies. Mm -hmm. We have AC, the non discrimination and harassment policy, and JIE, pregnant students policy. Yes. Um, so um, thank you, policy subcommittee members. Very valuable, Jen, Gary, and um, Adrian, and then also um, legal counsel as well. When we're lo looking at policies. This one is uh, changes that were made to the federal level of Title IX, which is addresses various topics of discrimination issues. So in many ways, Massachusetts has already adopted extra um, protections. Um, so there really aren't many substantive changes for us. However, in reviewing these existing policies for schools in Massachusetts, it was discovered that there's a lot of redundancy in various school committee policies. So through their legal counsel, as well as our legal counsel, most districts took this opportunity to not only uh, have to comply with the new Title IX changes, but also to consolidate and simplify discrimi discrimination uh, related policies. So we currently have the following policies, which are in your packet um, to, as a first reading um, to be rescinded. We have non-discrimination, a non-discrimination non based on of sex, harassment, and then sexual harassment slash Title IX. So we're recommending the rescinding of all of these policies and replacing them with just one, titled non-discrimination and harassment. Rescinding those four policies and replacing them um, with the one requires um, a school committee vote. In addition, through that one policy, you would be authorizing me to adopt procedures, which we have, um, for complaints of discrimination and harassment. There will be two procedures, one for uh, sex gender-based claims, that's called Title IX Sex Discrimination Grievance Procedure, and one for all the other claims based on protected classes, such as age, national, origin, religion, et cetera, and that's called the Civil Rights Grievance Procedure. These have already been drafted um, through Dr. Quilly, he's the contact person, and once the, through the second reading, this policy, you know, if, when it's adopted, then we'll link those. Those will be available on the website. And they are, of course, they're referenced in the policy as well. And then the second policy we have, which goes along with that, that's a, that is a new policy that needs to be adopted, is for our <coughs> pregnant students. We do have that policy. You'll see that this policy is a, uh, a little bit longer, um, talks about Title IX, and then I think it talks about. Um, making um, you know modifications as, you know, as necessary as outlined in the in the policy so those are the, the two main <coughs> what did I get it all yes on the non-discrimination and harassment I think it's much clearer now um, I'm questioning whether or not and the third paragraph after the word or five lines down you have to say discriminated against. I feel like we should insert the word against in there. Um, One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I see it. Right. I'll add that to when we do a final review. Yeah, okay. And then I'm going to go through and make sure that the policy the policy is tied into the grievance procedure. Right. Because a lot of with when you look at the um, procedures, and I do have copies here that I can I can give yeah. you. Um, they outline um, all the definitions, you know, 
know, everything that's in, in there. It's, I mean, it's a pretty substantial packet when you look at these, these. But these are procedures, not policy. So, but we still want to make sure that Jen's going to work on um, just vetting them and making sure that, especially through employment, that everything's in there that needs to be in there. I think just for the edification of folks watching at home, the way we do policies you know, in Commonwealth, there's a lot that is pre prescribed. There's a lot of model policies we get from MASC and other places, and then we take them. We have a number of readings before the body, uh, as well as having our own counsel and the members of the policy subcommittee um, examine them as well. So this is just <coughs> the first reading, and we'll be back on our agenda probably next next time around. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions in the meantime, don't. I mean, feel yep. free to email me and I can, we can or Mary, we can get it out to the subcommittee. Any other questions on the policies in their first reading? More of a comment. Sure. We're very lucky to have Councillor Geosits mm -hmm. on <laughs> this subcommittee because it's enormously helpful to have her legal lens on it. Yeah, <laughs> extremely helpful. Sure. Thank you. Excellent. Seeing nothing else, we'll move on to our fourth uh, item of new business, which is a reminder about the fail, uh, Charles Fails. Joseph Leach, Benjamin Rogers, and Dottie and William Cundy scholarship applications, which will be available for Walpole High School graduates um, this October. Mm -hmm. I believe we open it up the first. We uh, close it Halloween by 4 p.m. It's a tremendous opportunity. The majority of these people were members of our body in, in the past and have chosen through their estates to give significant amounts of money so that Walpole High School students who have gone on to Secondary education can avail themselves of this um, this great opportunity. So we love. It's a lot of work, but we would rather the stack to be big than small. Mm -hmm. That we're looking at. Um, so it will be available on the school committee uh, website starting October first and uh, closing October thirty first. So we, we hope that folks will help us make sure that if you know a graduate out there, um, that we we flag that for them. Can I make one comment. Sure. So the D. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, the date is scheduled for 1210, Mary, at 6 o'clock, which I believe that's the same date as the school building committee meeting, which starts at 630. I think that happened to us last year. I'm, I'm going to check to see if it's, if it's, we're definitely meeting on that date, but I think we should come up with a second option so Mary can send out a doodle poll and at least we'll keep that in the queue. Perfect. Um, because I know three of us impacts at least, I think, believe three school committee members and me. Excellent. Yes. Dr. Goff, superintendent's report. Yes, so as we know, the students have been in school for, um, I don't know, 10, 10 days now. Um, smooth opening, the weather cooperated. It's been great to see our classrooms come alive. Um, again, thank our administration and the staff for their hard work in preparing for the opening of our schools. Dr. Hahn and I have already been out to the schools to greet and welcome the students and their staff. Um, you know, we've welcomed students moving in from, you know, just our neighboring towns um, and those who return to Walpole Public Schools from charter schools, vocational schools, and private schools. We also welcome families who move to Walpole from other states, um, such as New York, Florida, Rhode Island, and Indiana, and from other countries, such as Brazil, Ethiopia, and the UK. Um, all principals mentioned, as you know, our open houses, um, back to school nights are scheduled in the next two weeks, so please check those calendars. You know, our back to school nights, it's really a wonderful opportunity for families to get a first hand glimpse into your child's educational journey, and they're really informative sessions des designed to bridge the gap between home and school. So, really, a chance to meet the teachers, but also gain insights into things like classroom routines, curriculum plans and also to discover how you can actively support your child's learning experience. Um, enrollment, I believe you have the enrollment the up, updated as of now. Um, you'll get another one October 1st, but you can see our current student enrollment. Um, it's still fluid, and like I said, we'll give you the update. You will notice that from last year to this year, you might notice the preschool enrollment. You know, it was 81 and it dropped to 65. That's not an enrollment that, that has to do with a second VIP program that was added, so when you add that, then um, those students, you know, are sub-separate, so um, therefore it decreases um, the spaces for typical peers because it is a special education um, program. 
Um, in terms of safety and security, I continue to meet and communicate with Chief Kelleher and the Walpole PD. Um, the officers are in the process, and as you know, are both setting up, and they've been conducting ALICE training within our schools. Um, both um, Officer Hart and Chief Kelleher will be attending an upcoming school committee um, meeting. Um, in the meantime, I do think it's important um, to share the critical safety procedures and protocols that we have in place. Um, all entrances are locked at all times. Additionally, this year, card access control systems were installed at all buildings, and these cards are required in order for staff to enter the buildings. All visitors to the school are to be admitted through the main office. We have security cameras at each entrance that allow for office staff to visually screen any visitors to the school prior to admitting them in the building. We have intercom systems at the main entrance to verbally communicate with all visitors. Security cameras are installed throughout the building. Classrooms have telephones and intercom. Strategically, specific staff utilizes walkies to enhance communication. Key locations have emergency alert buttons that can be used to summon help immediately. Staff are trained on emergency protocols and periodically practice of evacuations and critical incident response drills with both students and staff. Each school has a crisis response team that convenes in the event of a school-based emergency. And each school also has a threat safety assessment team that monitors the well-being of our students. Again, we work closely with the Walpole Police Department and the Fire Department in the development, review, and implementation of emergency procedures. And finally, all staff members are maintain heightened vis vigilance in monitoring our school environment. Um, next, I'm seeking Walpole High School students to serve on the superintendent's cabinet. This is my second year. Um, the cabinet is really a unique opportunity for our uh, Walpole High School students to share feedback, experiences, and perspectives on a variety of issues affecting students, schools, and the Walpole community. So it will be students in grades 9 um, through 12. Um, I believe Stephen sent it out today or yesterday for me. And um, there's an application form, and the applications are due Thursday, September 26th by 5 p.m. and I've added some dates throughout the years to meet more often. And then finally, September 20th, 830 to 945 at the Walpole High School track will be Walk with the Supers with Dr. Han and me, designed to promote community engagement and wellness so people can come for a portion, stay for the entire time, and please be reminded, September 20th is also an early release day. That's what I have. Questions or comments for the superintendent? Mrs. Gallagher. I just wanted to say, when you were talking about the safety things, um, we were talking in the school that I work at, it, it feels anti-community or um, it feels wrong to walk by a door if you're inside and not open it for the person who is waiting to come in. But it's really important to let the person be buzzed in and do the proper mm -hmm. procedure because unfortunately, you know, in your effort to be kind, if you don't, you know, if you don't know the person, you just can't be opening the door from the inside for for people that are coming. That all those safety procedures okay. that you have are there for a reason, and um, it's. I think if we turn it around and tell people we're protecting their children, and don't be insulted if somebody doesn't open the door for you. It reminds me, for those of you that remember Suzanne Gillum, you know my yeah. predecessor. When I was at Bird Middle School and she was the principal, like drilled that into yeah. everybody and, you know, no one would open the door. And one time, um, former assistant superintendent, Jean, Dr. Kenny, was outside and she had some boxes and was trying to figure out to get in a building and a student reported her. <laughs> um, to, to come Good. out. I mean, it just Good. shows the importance yeah. of just situational awareness mm -hmm. and being vigilant. Good stuff. <clears throat> Anything further? Seeing none, uh, moving on to old business, perhaps our last middle school building project update. Uh, on time and on budget, that's what <laughs> I keep saying, right? Um, here we are. I don't think I have anything to add. People have already spoken Excellent. quite well to it, so. Yeah, Thank you. Excellent. I feel uh, like we should show the auditorium. Okay. Thank you. Watch till the Thanks, end. Thanks, Patrick. For the, for the, for the big reveal. Uh, we're going to, uh, to our next uh, focus, capital wise, is our high school renovation project. So we agreed 
on a public forum. That's correct. September 26th Sixth, at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. So we have the flyer ready. Uh, Mary will get that out. I'll put that out in my, my s'more. Um, I texted Kate, so um, Main she'll meeting be there. Room. And uh, hopefully we should have the main meeting on, right? Excellent. So we will be, we'll be good to go. Okay. Just so the community is aware. So this is going to be similar to the forums that we held prior to um, voting on the middle school project, the town-wide vote. Because there's no override involved in the proposed high school plans, there isn't going to be a town-wide vote. It's just simply a matter of town meeting appropriating the funding um, within the town budget, which um, shortly after leaving here, we'll all be uh, traveling down to the meeting where the finance committee takes up that warrant article. Um, but all that is to say the forum is just a chance to inform the community of what the plans are and share the budget and the funding sources. Um, and we invite the community to share questions. Um, you can come in person, you can share, you can email questions ahead of time that we'll do our best to answer. Um, but just so everybody is aware, you know, as a community member, you will not be asked to vote on this project, but we do hope that you will um, and take the opportunity to inform yourself about it and um, share your questions with us so we can get you answers. And that's a good point because I know there's um, FAQ is just about finalized. So if people do have questions that we didn't put pretty co the comprehensive FAQ, but then we can add it and, mm -hmm. and that will be on the website. Okay. Let's go so are we posting that FAQ soon mm -hmm. so that people who are interested could read that and that might spark yeah, some questions? Mm -hmm. Good. Anything further on the high school? Excellent. Subcommittee activity. Anybody meet this week? Ms. Ms. Gallagher? Yeah, we met as a um, negotiating subcommittee mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just talked about the possibility of getting started soon and there's some, there's some real value in us doing that. So I would like to make a suggestion that we um, ask Dr. Goff to, on our behalf, write to the union an official request to open negotiations at a, I would say at a mutually agreeable time, ideally in early October, to give them an idea of what we're thinking. And then we'll work out the timing from there. Consensus for that? Okay, I'm so on it. Anything further, sub curriculum we sort of cover as well? And policy. And and policy. policy. That was it. Yeah. Get to the end here. Uh, citizens' comments? Mr. Zisk, nothing? All right, approval <laughs> of warrants, <laughs> nations, and minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd like to make a motion to approve the following warrants. We have accounts payable for schools and special education under warrant number 225009 and accounts payable schools 225010 for the amounts listed in your packet. Second. Motion by Ms. Rogers, second by Mr. Breen. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 600. Someone like safe gifts and donations. I can take them. Thank you, Mrs. Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> we have a mo uh, donation to Walpole High School for Music Drives Us for $2,500. We have a system-wide donation from Community Gardens for $278. And Boyden has um, a, combined, a combined donation from Base Date, Textiles, Shutterfly, and The Pack for a total of $1,357.33. Second the motion. Motion by Mrs. Gavin, second by Ms. Denizio. All those in favor? Opposed, abstain, 600. Minutes. I'll take that. I'd like to make a motion to approve the August 29th, 2024 school committee meeting minutes. Second. Motion by Mr. Green, second by Ms. Gavin. All those in favor? Opposed, abstain, 600. And I'd like to make a motion to approve the September 5th, 2024 Policy Subcommittee meeting minutes. Second. Motion by Mr. Breen, second by Ms. Gautz. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 6 0 0. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Breen, second by Ms. Rogers. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? 6 0 0.
We'll see you at town hall in an hour. <laughs>